Today we're going to wrap up chapter 13. And we're going to play what I call the audit approach game. We're going to start out with private companies again, not covered by Sarbanes-Oxley, not subject to SEC. We believe test the controls will cost less, but when we evaluate the design of the controls, we do not believe the controls will be effective. If the controls are not effective, we preliminarily assess control risk is high, and we're going to take a primarily substantive approach. A private company, there's no use testing the controls if we don't believe they're effective. We always evaluate the design. Private company, we're not required to perform tested controls. Always do analytical procedures because they're cheap. And we're going to do extensive substantive test. Next scenario, you believe the contr tested controls will cost less. However, in this case, you believe the client's controls will be effective. So this is what we're hoping for. We preliminarily assess control risk is low. We're going to take reduced level control risk approach. Always extensive test of controls, some analytical procedures, and we can limit the extent of our substantive testing because the controls are effective. You believe substantive test or control Substantive test will cost less than tested controls. Since it's a private company, I already know that I'm going to take the primarily substantive approach. The controls we don't believe would be effective, so that just confirms it. I'm going to preliminarily assess control risk is high. Take a primarily substantive approach. Always none because it's a private company. Yes, we'll do analytical procedures. And because we're not relying on the controls, we're going to have to perform extensive substantive tests. Next scenario, you believe substantive tests will cost less. Again, I know I'm going to take a primarily substantive approach because it's a private company. I believe their controls are effective, so I'll preliminarily assess control risk is low. Uh, but then I'm going to explain why I need to assess control risk is high because I'm not going to test it. So we have to document that. We have to document that our preliminary, ass preliminary assessment of control risk is low, but because we think it would be more efficient uh, to perform substantive tests, we're going to assess control risk is high because we don't have any evidence to support a low control risk assessment. We'll take a primarily substantive approach. Always none because it's private. Always extensive. Page 427, I read all the four examples, but uh, the analysis for I think is really good. Uh, the way Tad teaches this, it comes off as kind of a sequential process. Uh, we believe their controls are good. We test the controls. The controls are effective. Uh, everything goes as planned. We are far enough along in life to know that things often don't go quite as planned. So auditing is actually an iterative process. Uh, we do this. It's not quite what we planned. We need to adjust our audit approach. So in this example, they assess control risk as medium. Uh, they were going to do extensive analytical procedures. Uh, they were going to do some test of controls and plan detection risk medium. So they were going to do some test of controls, extensive analytical procedures, and, and some test of details of account balances. That was the plan. However, they found significant misstatements while performing substantive tests. What does that mean about the controls? If there's significant material misstatements, then the controls are not effective. So they need to assess control risk as max regardless of the results of their tested controls. 
and they're going to end up having to perform extensive substantive tests. Okay, now a scenario, private company. We believe tested controls will cost less than substantive test. After evaluating the design of the controls, you believe the controls would prevent, or we believe they'd be effective. Therefore, we're going to preliminarily assess control risk as low, and we're going to plan on taking a reduced level of control risk approach. Evaluate the design always. Extensive tested controls. Whoop, next slide. So if something that went wrong, while performing our tested controls, we encounter control deficiencies. So their controls aren't effective. Do you need to change your audit approach? Yes, and these are what I would want on the test. You'll change your assessment of control risk to high. Controls are not effective. You'll change your audit approach to primarily substantive, and you'll perform extensive substantive test. So here's where we left off. We've already evaluated the design of the controls. We performed extensive tested controls, but they weren't effective. We can do analytical procedures, and now we must do extensive substantive test. So this is the worst of all worlds. Think of extensive, rhymes with expensive. Um, we spent a lot of money on tested controls. Uh, they didn't give us the assurance we need, so we're going to have to perform extensive substantive tests. Private company, the only time we take a reduced level control risk approach is when we believe the controls are both effective and they'll be less costly than substantive tests. If controls are ineffective, we don't have any choice. We must take a primarily substantive approach and perform extensive substantive tests. Uh, if for a private company, if substantive tests are less costly, then we're going to take a primarily substantive approach. We always have to document our understanding of the internal controls and evaluate the design of the controls. We preliminarily assess control risk. If we believe the controls are effective and we believe tested controls will cost less than substantive tests, we're going to design and perform extensive test controls. We'll document the results of our tested controls and make a final control risk assessment. We'll design and perform limited substantive tests and document the results of our substantive test. If we believe the controls are not effective or we believe substantive tests would be cheaper for a private company, we skip the testing of the internal controls and design and perform extensive substantive tests and document the results of our substantive test. Now we're going to play the game with public companies. You believe tested controls would cost less. However, you do not believe the controls will be effective. So we're going to be forced to assess control risk is high, controls aren't effective, and we'll have to take a primarily substantive approach. Now for a public, we always evaluate the design. For a public company, we're always going to perform some test of controls. Even though we don't believe the controls are effective, we're going to, for a public company, we're going to express an opinion on the, the controls. We're going to express an opinion that the controls are not effective. We can't express an opinion without evidence. Now, some is not a technical word. It's not a word of the profession. It's Tad's word. My belief is it probably takes less evidence to show that the controls are ineffective than it does to prove they're effective. We always do analytical procedures. Because the controls are not effective, we'll have to perform extensive substantive testing. Next scenario. You believe substantive tests will cost less. Well, 
After evaluating the design of the controls, you believe the controls would be effective. Okay, so this is a public company. I'm going to preliminarily assess control risk is low, and I'm going to take a reduced level of control risk approach. Because it's a public company, um, the clients are more interested in receiving a report that their controls are effective than they are saving a little money on the Always evaluate the design. If we want to say the report that the controls are effective, we're going to need to perform extensive test of controls. Always analytical procedures. And if the controls are effective, we can perform limit. We can limit the extent of our substantive test. Next scenario, public company. You believe test the controls will cost less. You believe the client's controls will be effective. Preliminarily assess control risk is low. Take a reduced level of control risk approach. Always yes. Always yes. Now keep going with the previous example. While we're doing our substantive test, we detect material misstatements. We'll have to change our audit approach. So we'll have to change our assessment of control risk from low to high, even though we tested the controls. Okay. We're going to have to change to a primarily substantive approach. We can't rely on their internal controls if they're not effective. The existence of a material misstatement proves that they're not effective. They didn't prevent or detect and correct a material misstatement. Perform extensive substantive test. And that's what I'd want on the test is that you have to first change your assessment of control risk, change your audit approach, and perform extensive substantive test. Now here's where we left off. Oh, I'm so proud of this. Watch this. Boom, boom. So we're going to have to go back and perform extensive substantive test. Public company, controls are effective. We're always going to take a reduced level of control risk approach regardless of cost because we're going to have to ex express an opinion on the effectiveness of their controls. Uh, we can't say their controls are effective unless we do extensive testing of controls. Management is willing to pay a higher price for an audit. The, uh, reduced level of control risk approach because management wants to be able to express an opinion their controls are effective. If controls are ineffective, we have to perform extensive substantive testing, take a primarily substantive approach. But for a public company, we're going to perform some test of controls to support our opinion that the controls are not effective. We always have to obtain and understand the internal control and evaluate the design effectiveness of those internal controls. Document our understanding. Design and profess, perform test of controls to make our final controllers assessment. Document the results of test of controls. Document our final control risk assessment. If the controls are effective, we can design and perform a limited substantive test document the results of those tests. If the controls are ineffective, we're going to have to design and perform extensive substantive tests and document the results of those tests. Document, document, document. Okay, we've got to have the documentation in our work papers. Uh, the, the figure 12-1 on page 400, whoop, not Figure 1211 on page 400 is very good. So I encourage you to look at that. This is kind of my summary. Private company, if the controls are ineffective, we have to take a primarily substantive approach. If we believe the controls are effective, but substantive tests are cheaper, we'll take a primarily substantive approach. If we believe the controls are effective and test the controls are 
cheaper, we'll take a reduced level of control risk approach. For a public company, if the controls are ineffective, we'll have to take a primarily substantive approach, but we will always perform some tested controls because we're going to have to issue a report on the effectiveness of the internal controls, and we can't just say their controls are ineffective. We have to have evidence to support that opinion. If we believe their controls are effective, we're going to take reduced level control risk approach on public companies regardless of cost uh, because we're going to have to express an opinion that their controls are effective and we'll need to perform extensive test of controls in order to support that opinion. Good luck on the next test.